Hey everybody, this is Alex Krupski, once again joined by my co-host Jake Hoffman. We are on lucky episode number 13 Woo. of the Millennials in Print podcast. <laughs> today we have another very special guest today. Uh, we have Jim Tor from CI Design. They are a marketing agency. I don't know if this is going to be the right intro, you tell me. But I'm doing good. Uh, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Uh, full service marketing agency in the third ward downtown here in Milwaukee. Yeah. N- nearby Milwaukee. So, Jim, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. And let me show up about an hour late. <laughs> <laughs> but but you no did words. come prepared. You yeah. brought your own material. I so that's a huge material. win. <laughs> he did. He did. Uh, so, yeah, we work with CI Design in a, a lot of capacities um, on our marketing team. Uh, they kind of serve as an extension of us. They actually produced the Randall Road Trip Catalog uh, in partnership with us. Yeah. By the way. Blast. Get your copy, randall.com backslash catalog. Jim, I'm going to kick it to you. Um, cool. Give us a little background, where, where you've been, where you came from, what you're doing. Yeah. Um, well, uh, your Millennials in Print podcast um, is, uh, you know, not that I'm a millennial, more generation, Gen X, but, um, but, but is, is where I started. I started in print. Um, let, me, let me tell you, I'm, I'm creative director and CEO of my company, but... I'm executive creative director, and the road um, that built up my chops to be a creative director came through print. Um, so in the early 90s, after graduating and, um, and then getting my business going, um, it, it, uh, it, there was no internet for a couple more years. <laughs> I'm that last generation where we did things, yeah. you know, by hand, actually, a little bit before the, the computer. Uh, the Mac was introduced um, in my college years, you know, um, but but we did things a lot by hand, um, the old fashioned way, and of like say, your pre press department. Sure. You know they we'd have those war stories to talk about the, the old <laughs> days when we used to do do some of typesetting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and so I know some of those principles. So I'm a designer, at this at this point in in the in the nineties, um, that grew up a, a way that that wasn't directly started um, with the Macintosh and and we put things down on ink on paper that's what we did that's print and um, and it might be web fed or might be sheet fed but our, our clients needed to put something in in the hands of their customers and their audience and um, and so really to say I was a brand designer and a, and a print designer exclusively because it's what we had um, but then as I grew up the agency and um, and the opportunity was to take things digital and, and go to the web. Of course, we did that, and you know that story. Yeah. But um, yeah, um, I, I really started life as a graphic designer, and then the entrepreneur spirit took over, and and um, and we've built up this team, which you guys yep. <laughs> work with, um, work with, and love. Um, they love you, you love them. It's apparent, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. like <laughs> yeah. everyone's really excited about um, the work we get to do together. Um, y- your core team is about five or yep. six people you interact with, including me. Um, but there's uh, there's 40 of us total. So, um, like you said, thanks for the good introduction. Um, you know, with a birthplace CI design, birthplace in print, and 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 put an ink on paper. We are we are a full service strategic marketing agency. Still get to do this stuff. <laughs> this is a super s- uh, secret uh, client right now that we're doing. Um, yeah, I can barely even talk about it, but like it, it, it'd be a box and elements that go into the box, Sweet. all print, die cut, embossed, textures of, pa- excuse me, textures of paper, mm. and uh, really thoughtful stock selection. That that goes on right alongside of the enterprise level website that we're designing and that's doing awesome. UX. Yeah. So that's a little bit about us and, and my start. I yeah. think part of the reason we get along so well is because you guys understand that component already yeah. coming into a printer, you already have all that background and experience. Yeah, I mean one of the things that I'm really kind of interested to kind of get to know a little bit and it's it's interesting because we we obviously work together so I've kind of understand from a process standpoint how we get there but i kind of want to understand like how you think about sometimes so one of the things that i think you were the maybe one of the first person to expose me was this cope method was create once and publish everywhere and so when i guess my question is kind of when you're going after it 
are you thinking more about the medium or are you thinking about how do we take this overarching message and apply it to each medium? Oh, good. Okay. Look, keep Starting me on track. The hard ones right there. Yeah. Man. <laughs> keep me on track as I answer. Sure. That's, that's, that's a good one. What Jake's talking about is um, COPE, C-O-P-E, yep. create once, publish everywhere. And as you ask the question, like, what do you think about the medium or, or, or however you might have just said that, um, I would say, no, not so much the medium. Like now, uh, a lot of the marketing strategy, it's going to live in the places. Sure. Whatever those places, you know, social, LinkedIn, paid advertising, other banner and emails and, and all these things. So literally the, the almost the premise, the principle of COPE is that they're focused on the message. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and look at that strategy that that it's gonna and then and then figure out the channels it needs to go sure. through and so again I, I guess you know i don't i got excited you know i, I brought my own my own uh little piece. <laughs> little piece here to, to to share today but i not that that you need me to relate everything back to print no yeah yeah but i will you know like conversely look back two decades ago and if you had content you had to make some pretty thoughtful choices. There's, you're gonna put it in somebody's mailbox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a little more than two decades ago, but I mean, like literally, or you can put it in their hand, or a salesperson's gonna leave it behind, you know? Yeah. And then you thought about the medium a ton, mm -hmm. right? Because you're like, well, it's gonna feel special if somebody hands it to me, or what's gonna stand out in a mailbox, or, or these kind of things. Um, so I think some of the same intentionality yeah. goes into the digital realm because it, it, it does need to enter a different kind of mailbox with some kind of standout and specialness. Yeah. How do you make, how do you visually make something maybe tactile that, sure. that used to be, you know, um, something that, that, that felt, how do we wake up the senses even though it's, it's, it's a digital world? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I think, um, I think part of the like selfish reason why I'm answer why I'm asking that question is because, so I work primarily with people that are for the first time getting into print, right? And they sort of have this concept of, well, I have to completely change, right? Everything. Everything. Yeah. And I'm like, well, wait a second. Your co as long as your core message is your message, the medium should do its job, right? And that's kind of why I was, I was trying to understand what your major focus is on. Right? Yeah, awesome. No, I, li I like the way you're saying that and, and to almost want to help you solve that yeah. problem. Like, I don't know who exactly you might be sitting with, but exposing them to the opportunity of print, you know, I think there too, what's the message? We, 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 we're, we're such brand focused yeah. <laughs> folks. So, so there's, there's a message, there's a mantra, there's a culture, there's something that, that we need to, to, to tell people about, I, yeah. you know, absolutely. And, and, and sometimes, you know, maybe it's a little disruption, you know, that like through the clutter of, everything that's coming in an in basket or that's out in the digital sphere how about you know also introducing print yeah whether it's a catalog or it's a direct mail yeah. or a postcard or something yeah right? yeah and 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 those things could be a vehicle to send you back to a digital realm totally too. yeah so um, just looking at that whole ecosystem and sometimes maybe just disrupting that you know the pattern has been it's easy to 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 um, you know, do the digital property, but how mm -hmm. about we surprise and delight our audience by coming to them a, a different way? Um, that would be fun to, you know, to be a fly in the wall as you kind of <laughs> yeah. give that clinic. <laughs> um, yeah. What What do you? Um, let me ask you guys a question. Sure. Like, what What's the last print piece that? Besides your own, you know, sure. that, that, that you, <laughs> we're that, biased. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I think maybe on the consumer or, yeah, maybe business side that, that like really stopped you, impressed you. And and like. Yeah, there's been some there's been some interesting ones. I mean, one of the ones that I got recently um, and they're actually a client of ours, but I didn't work specifically on that project. So it was just really interesting because. So I was focusing on one side of their business, which is more of this like web to print postcard direct mail. And then all of a sudden I got this like beautifully printed Southern Tide catalog and it was like soft touch. And it was just like, this is a gorgeous, p like this was very intentional. They knew their audience. And I was just like, there's this 
when it all comes together, it's such a great, <laughs> great feeling. Yeah. Because it yeah. was like timed correctly, and it wasn't like it stood out. Yeah, it was it was really impressive, really well done. Nice. What was the format like? Was it multi multi page? Yeah. So basically, it was it was a pretty standard in terms of formatting. Um, in terms of so like what we've seen historically is it traditionally used to be more about like more pages, more products, more sales. Where now we're seeing people take a different tact, which is. How do we tell kind of like exactly like the piece you brought? It's more about like this lifestyle. It's usually 24 pages to 32 pages, somewhere in that sweet spot, mm -hmm. um, a little bit more tar targeted. So it was, yeah, kind of that format. But yeah, just like I was like, wow, this is really <laughs> I think it's printed piece. Awesome. You yeah. Know? And, and, you, and you remembered it. It, it, it made an impression yeah. on you. And he talked about, you know, even the way it felt and, and that soft touch. And I know that's. You know that's that's going through your mind all the time. Yeah, doing sure. finishes, but still, it doesn't it matter? It just does. Yeah. Um, it's all subconscious too, you know, and all the data and everything. The studies that have been done, they they show that they show that it yeah. has this impact neurologically yeah. on you to keep that around longer. And I think what's interesting too is, you know, with something like that, you almost leave it on your table because it's it kind of enhances throw away. the room a little bit, you know, <laughs> yeah. like you've got this kind of quality piece. And then as people come, you know, and it's funny because, you know, me, I'm always like in my head, like, Oh, is this stuff really work? What's going on? And then it's like, when people came over, they were like, Oh, this is, you know, and then you see them and you're like, okay, this is yeah. cool. How it comes yeah. So print like can that. do that. You know, it can stay out on yeah. a table and that's, yeah, that's super exciting. I think for me, the last couple of things, uh, including, uh, sure. This, this catalog, it just just had like, uh, as telling um, to your viewers now that we were saying before, um, just a lighter uncoated yeah. paper. Um, I thought that was refreshing to say I, I don't have to feel like I'm ruining the rainforest when I receive this. Like the choice was made to be very thoughtful um, and, and a great design, but like the paperweight feels like thanks. I I, I got the information I need and not more. It's, it's not heavy. Yeah. Um, so so th th that's an interesting thing. But but other than, than this piece here um, was actually probably for me with print has been some packaging mm. and, and even just tags. So if you, I, I'm sure, you know, whether it be um, w whatever kind of apparel or something like that, there's been some really, really cool thick stock and boss. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and there too, I, I do have kind of a social mindset or what, um, that's not the quite word to use, but like, you know, environmental, yep, yep. um, mindset of like, okay, did I really need this thick stock with foil and stuff? I think what I'm seeing though is really thoughtful, slender, minimal use, but really, really expressing, yeah. uh, people expressing themselves in print. So catalog to packaging to, yeah. to other things, it's just... Uh, uh, exciting time really to be a designer mm, it, um, sure. that 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 walks that that walk too because um, we have a lot of great elements a, at our fingertips well let's let's talk about that for a second because sure, yeah. I think that's something interesting so you talk about the environmental aspect and there is that I think educational opponent up component, component, component to it yeah. that comes up with you know how, how healthy is this for the environment and there's always there's a lot of data to back that up as well that it's it is very eco-friendly and things like that. But the other part of the educational component that I'd like to touch on is, are you seeing that actually uh, with, with some of your clients as well who are probably more digitally focused, but now they're getting, some of them I'm sure are starting to ask about print and yeah. things like that. Is there an educational component there for you guys as well? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of times we just get to be that creative like um, spark that says, have you thought about this? Because it's just not as well-worn of a path anymore. But I don't think I'll be able to recite the percentage, at least to date. Um, but I know that of a couple years ago, that if email, you talked about timing, the, the, the digital property and then receiving yeah. uh, the print piece, the um, conversion rate of AB studied like... To uh, death. Yeah, <laughs> was that receiving the physical and the email Together. was like a 68% um, that combination yeah. had 68% something, right? Well, 68 seems pretty dramatic to me. 
that if it's part of your strategy to use print and email, that those results. And, and I, I believe actually the pocket of um, industry that, that I'm talking about is um, we used to do a fair amount of higher education sure. type things. So this was um, related around probably enrollment and view book uh, type of thing, uh, a, a period of time uh, that, that's kind of run its course I I at our shop. But, but for about 15 years, we were, we were involved in that. And that's where, where that statistic came from. But I'm sure it has correlation to yeah. just about any industry. And, yeah, and, and we see a lot of that, too. I mean, one of the things that I think is, is becoming very interesting, and I'm sure it obviously kind of hits on a lot of stuff that you're doing, is with sort of these updates to the Apple's privacy and Facebook. And, and one of the things we're seeing is these I'll call them like digitally native brands that have traditionally relied on social media, digital channels for acquisition efforts are like, hey, we can't, we're not generating the same results. Mm. And so what they're kind of now pivoting smartly is, okay, print is, print is really gone through, I would say, like we're a mature industry, right? And so from a regulation standpoint, from a rule standpoint, those are already been hashed out, worked through, <laughs> um, you know, those are pretty well set. So are, are, are you anticipating like things like that going to cause maybe a shift in the way people think about go to market and, and yeah, things like that? You're thinking further ahead than I am actually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but really good to put on my radar that way. I would just say I'm, I'm really very campaign focused. Okay. And so I just really picture that audience and say, how do we get to them and how do we create delight? Sure. And, um, and there's some pretty specific campaign goals, right? I mean, it's all about goals these days and measuring those things. And, and you know, the client that, not to say impatient, but they want to see results. Yeah. Digital is really going to get that out there. Quick, yeah. we got to have, um, if, if we're going to disrupt, you know, mm -hmm. um, at, at all, um, we want to we want to be thinking of print in the ecosystem early. It's yeah. got a little longer runtime, yep. right? So, mm -hmm. um, no, the r really good point and, and something to study. I'm sure my digital uh, are all over it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they've they've talked about it in meetings <laughs> yeah. with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like absolutely. we can't do they're, this they're starting honest. this date. Like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know we were. All oh, right. That's a lot of time from now. That's, that's right. I get to say, I, I, I do the art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so they cool. are, I think, at the core of everything, though, is that, again, the studies uh, and being inside of an organization yourself, you know that these are all complementary channels rather than adversary channels, yeah. right? They are going to compete with each other in some regard. But sure. the more you use, the better. The more arrows you have in your quiver, the better, mm -hmm. right? Back to Cope, you know, and I think about um, – create once publish every everywhere um for us you know the longer form story still needs to be told yeah and that can be a scrolling website that's great sure but um but you know what you get as a nugget in even an email is not that you know it's gonna not be that long mm -hmm. um you know consider how a couple of our clients right now are um donor based you know reach outs sure okay sure, sure. to trying to get that donor base to contribute or attract new donors uh, you know really I I is a is a, um, a sizable contribution going to come because you emailed them hmm. um, you know invite them into the story let let um, let some of these um, you know the print vehicle um, be out on the coffee table for discussion with a significant other or um, or you know business associate or something to consider these things that would be an example that we're dealing with right now um so the message is is worthy enough to to hit send on an email it might be worthy enough to to put build something it. in the mailbox yeah. yeah definitely um how much fun did you have building out our catalog <laughs> i had a blast and you know i i we because it's uh let, let me let you run yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go yeah, yeah. yeah there we go <laughs> because it's kind of planning time of year and, sure and, yeah and before we got on the podcast here we said you know we, we, we're talking about the sequel the sequel yeah what, what 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 would we do and um and this was great um i i honestly i i remember i remember um talking to y'all and 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 that the path to this vision was um it unfolded like yeah. a good yeah. project would but um, but but there was some really clear things early on, yeah. like 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 the the way that the the inspiration comes, and uh, wanted to be very visual. Yeah, it was. 
and uh, <laughs> touch you know soft touch is great I, I like the size look not not too unlike the, the the piece that I got in the mail that I that I'm impressed by um, the very short little perfect bind um, but but anyway uh, how fun so fun um, basically um, audience we, we wanted to invite people on, on, on a journey you know to learn about a Randall and um, and we said well w- w- what's the American <laughs> uh, what's yeah. the American journey but the road trip yeah. <laughs> and so we unpack it a number of different ways um, sure there's some stock photography in here but also um, I got to take a picture of a Ford Ranchero um, <laughs> in a parking lot um, that you know just it, it got to be this this theme this metaphor for um, you know considering um, the the partnership totally. I say this you know you're really going to get to know somebody when you take a road trip with them yeah yep. yeah and you'd want to be very thoughtful about who you ask to sit in the Front and shotgun and, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and maybe backseat eating funyuns and, and, and things like that because you, 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 if you're on a road trip so we got to unpack that that story that we kind of overlaid on top of of what you all do but um how fun is that yeah, yeah absolutely fun. because some many times we're just client might be it's marketing objective and it's very serious tech talk and yeah. stuff like that so you let us be human yeah that's and um it, you know look for a relationship with 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 who'd receive that so you getting pretty good feedback off of this absolutely or? cool and i think i think what we got to do with it too and what was so interesting for me to be a part of for the first time was this is what a catalog can be you know we're not just talking products and prices it's it's lifestyle in yeah, today's market you know yeah. and, the, and the storytelling absolutely um, and that's that's what was fun to showcase i, I think it was such a uh, funny like <laughs> i guess for me when I first started at Arando, it was like, we're a cataloging company that doesn't use cataloging <laughs> in our own marketing, but we sell cataloging. Like, there's something not balanced with this equation. So then, like, yeah. finally, kind of a long three-year dream of, like, finally having a yeah. catalog was so awesome. This page here where we talk about um, your, your clientele yeah. and we say your travel partners. Um, but I look at, you know, each of these, and we won't call them out by name right sure. here, but they all have strong brand yeah. stories. Yeah. And so I think part of it too, and now it's coming back to me a little bit yeah. more, some of our first meetings was to say, they all have a pretty specific audience and, an, and a, a story to invite their customers mm-hmm. into. And, and you want to give them a, a, a bit of a, a wink and say, and us too, we're, we're on, we're on that journey with you. And we have something that, that, that that um, would depict what it's like to to work with you guys. Yeah, to, totally. To, to, and, and these are long-standing relationships that you have with your clients. Yeah. Some, some are. Some, yeah. But mm-hmm. regardless, even if it was one-off, it's it, it's a commitment, and, and there's going to be some press-checking time, and you're going to be in the, mm-hmm. in the saddle together um, in that. So somehow I think in, in this, in this um, pot that we stirred, you know, we said we get you, and we're like you too. We're not so different, and and, and our brand is is worth unpacking. So, I think that the coolest thing for me is it, it, it kind of started the brand journey for sure that's been evolving between uh, between our two companies yeah. and, mm-hmm. and for you guys, and it's pretty exciting what what's going on here. So, wh- how how would you say of the efforts of um, you know going through the last couple of years mm-hmm. some tough stuff. But how would you say culture, brand, um, even busyness, how, how's it going here? Yeah, I think what's interesting is sometimes when you're going through like day to day, you almost just need someone on the outside. And this is going to be kind of a, a bad metaphor, but it's kind of like when you're in a bad relationship and everyone knows you're in a bad relationship, but when you're in it, you can't see it. And then you're like, <laughs> look back and you're like, well, obviously that was a terrible relationship. Like, why never anyone tell me? And it was funny because I've always felt like there's been this amazing Randall story that like really hasn't ever been told. And it was almost like we needed you. You kind of talked about it, this creative ignition, this creative spark to come in and be like, here's a mirror. <laughs> here's what we're seeing. And you're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. <laughs> right. And that's been that's been a super cool thing that I've seen. Awesome. And I've and what I've kind of seen, too, is even once you start sort of holding yourself in this higher regard, once the mirrors kind of been turned back on you 
then you're doing everything through that lens. So the culture improves, the messaging improves. Like you, you're setting a, almost a new standard, right? And that's been that's been awesome for me to experience. Definitely, Man. I think that's probably not unlike what each of us do for our clients as well, and what other printers <laughs> probably strive to do for their clients is again serve as that extension of their marketing team, yeah. and be able to be the ones to be like, not everything's so bad. Like you're doing a pretty good job. Like let it. <laughs> We can help you in these ways. Yeah. So I well, imagine you feel the same, Jim. You bet. And I would just commend you guys, too, like very, very thoughtful mm -hmm. to, to care about, you know, from the employee experience yeah. that we've been talking about to your customers and everything. So, hey, with that, you know, the intentionality that you go about stuff, been great to be, be on that journey with you. So, yeah, no, I'm glad that you're in such a, <laughs> a, such a positive place and um, – yeah, it's exciting around here. Yeah, it is. Smell the ink and yeah, <laughs> you definitely smell the ink. Um, we did touch on it uh, very briefly there. Um, this is somewhat related, but in this podcast, we always talk about the recruitment of young people, particularly in mm -hmm. the print industry, just because it, like Jake said, I think that we almost like skipped a generation a little bit. Uh, in that, mm -hmm. you know, there was this perception that things were declining; it was never going to exist again, yeah. and all this sort of stuff and now we're on this ride again where we're back up and uh so we're we're in the midst of education educating you know a young audience again um do you do you feel some of those same ways or let's say um when you have somebody new join your team and they're doing all these different things mm -hmm. accounts they obviously are well versed in digital when a print project comes up well, i mean yeah i sure do and and we get excited about that but but to, to stay focused on the question about like you know young folks and and their perception of of that um I'll, I'll go back to when i was young and just out of school early 90s and this adobe pdf thing was coming out so oh, yeah. we <laughs> talked about it like that like we use the adobe products um uh, illustrator was my best friend i mean it's still still a, probably my go-to my favorite kind of thing logo work and, and these and these kind of things but um but there your, your best friend was also going to nip you in uh, in a couple of years, they were saying the death of print. And we had printers coming in to the design firm I worked at in Phoenix um, from before CI Design. And um, and they were a little fearful. they like, no, I think it's for real. Like, PDF's going to replace print. And they're like, okay. <laughs> well, it hasn't happened yet, right? <laughs> no. And, and and yet there's – I mean, it's all, we live in the world of PDFs. It's all good. And, and we might even fill up forums and, 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 and we and use PDFs to create the print files. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so, so that was, that was, that was something that like never, never came. And, and, um, and yet it, and it yet it did come. It's just, it, it coexists. Yeah. And I think that's even what I'm saying here today is like it, it it's, we, we live in a physical world and maybe physical is even that much more special because, sure. You know, we really can go paperless, and that's a, that's a worthy thing. But there's a time, um, and so anyway, to to stay focused, I just I I do love walking folks through whether it's you know an intern or somebody who's been on my team a long time is just hey, and have we considered um, the print piece of the equation? Yeah, and and when we do, I had so much fun pulling out the sample, yeah. the, the samples. Oh, the you know from all the different paper mills and and, uh, and textures and colors and weights and and just really um, just putting filling up a table with all with all that stuff. So I think you know that is something that becomes very collaborative as well. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a team building thing. Is it is it all because we ended up wanting to do like a little new twist on a business card? Some <laughs> some sometimes it's just that, but. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I, I think uh, the, the designer that can come and show me she's done this amazing Photoshop work sure. and the layers are all there and it's really cool, great. And did you consider the medium? Yes, for, for sure, mm -hmm. and, and, and probably digital. How might that translate to a coated sheet of paper or uh, uncoated sheet of paper? And those are just really fun to just be – be that that wise old guy in the room and and you know just just bring bring the questions to mind and let them sort of solve and, and design for a new medium it's, it's really yeah. cool yeah yeah awesome. new to them new to them in yeah. some cases Absolutely. in some cases but we see some pretty great portfolios where i think people got 
got got a good um, a good start with their education, and you know, uh, we're not. I don't, I don't know that anyone's. Yeah, maybe a few come in, you know, a, a, and haven't touched print, mm-hmm. but but I think a lot, of, a lot of the schools and a lot of the jobs have prepared prepared kids pretty well these days. Jim, you are also in just switching gears, the host of the Connector Podcast, <laughs> yeah. which is a few months old, right? Probably just about as old as ours. Yeah. Um, tell us about that a little bit. Yeah. I want to hear some more. Oh, thanks for asking. Yeah, quick PSA for that, I guess. <laughs> um, I um, have been on a journey, right, of going from like five employees to I remember kind of stopping near around 16, something in the 20s, and now 40, right? And this has taken 28 years to do. So, um, uh, you know, but what, what was interesting to me, as I've said already, as a designer, that um, that's how I got into this, but then I really had this more entrepreneurial calling, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that even, too, was umbrellaed and couched in just communicating, communications, okay, there's a pull through there, but but connecting, connecting mm-hmm. like with um, emotional intelligence, you know, just to really understand why, you know, looking looking back and looking forward and, and looking present even with my teams is like, how how do I motivate or get on the same page or, or you know, as a communicator, how, how's it working out? And, and just really studying the folks I've employed or the clients and go, oh, I get really different reactions out of maybe being this, what I think is the same delivery <laughs> to, to different people. What is that all about? And um, so kind of an awkward setup, but to say that I really study humans and I study myself, like how is this communication thing working out? And what I kind of outlined in my, um, my first intro to my podcast is that I, just want, I want to share that because um, I think we can be more effective communicators. I think we can find that our communication styles are just that and that, um, that we, can, we can move some needles if, if we can decode each other. And so connector on a couple, a couple different um, – uh, wavelengths. One is that I just like to meet people, <laughs> and, and I sure like to you know meet that new client, and, and that's great. But then, how do we figure out about leading teams to to do meaningful work like our two teams do? Yep. Um, so we've invited in coaches, and and uh, and I've learned just a tremendous um, bit about myself in in being a good communicator, and. Um, and so as I m- invite marketing professionals to be on this podcast, and, and it's not, not even as, um, uh, you know, mic- mic'd up a- as sophisticated <laughs> a- as we are today, um, we just kind of cover marketing, but it, it's, it's a lot to do with, like, how do we, how do we get along with uh, the teams that we are, are often leading, and, and what's that client experience like to be on the other side of us, but also how do, how do we how do we how do we navigate you know the the, the, the tough the tough situations? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we just kind of kind of I'm just picking folks who I want to learn more about, and um and and that's my offering to, to get you connected with them. Awesome. Yeah, it's just been fun. It's kind of evolving. Is not very you know I'm not I'm 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 starting to settle into what that's like. Yeah. Uh, to interview and, and, and that, and it's it's going okay. I I, I want I want to keep it up. It's it's a great guest, and, and I was just telling you guys, yeah. got got three lined up uh, as we head into the new year. It should be really good. Well, we'll be sure to link that in the YouTube yep. video for you guys at home. Thanks. Yeah. Um, honestly, I mean, just in being conscious of everybody's time, yeah. uh, our audience's time, we always kick it off to the guests. Did you have any kind of final thoughts? Anything you wanted to kind of wrap up with? Um, no, uh, I would just say. Yeah, thanks, guys. It's been it's been it's been really great to see um, your passion for Randall. That's been really cool um, from day one. And and I know even even your roles have, mm-hmm. have found themselves um, uh, kind of in, in new places. But like do you really care. Yeah. That's it, infectious. That's really cool to be around. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for what you do. Your heart, um, yeah. you know, in, in your in your uh, own business um, and how my team gets to interact with that. That's super, super cool. So 
we got a great team. Yeah, we sure do. It's a and fun time. Working with you guys has been awesome. So obviously, thank you for all the things that you guys yeah. do for us. So yeah, it's been great. Thanks for joining. Yeah, Jim. thanks for joining. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks thank for you guys listening. for thanks joining us at home. Thanks again, Jim. Okay. And we'll see you in episode fourteen. Thanks, awesome. guys. Thank you.